welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and today we're looking at prime numbers. Now, prime numbers, in order to understand what they are, you really need to know what factors are. So if you haven't seen the factors video, if you're not sure what factors are, go and watch that first and then come back here. So I'm going to assume you know what factors are and how to find them. A prime number is simply a number that doesn't have any factors except for one and itself. Let me show you. Imagine we had to find all the factors of 5. So using our method, you start with 1 and you say 1 times what gives me 5? Well, 1 times 5 gives you 5. And then you try 2. Does 2 go in? No, it's not even. Does 3 divide into 5? Nope. 4? Nope. 5? Well, that's something we've already got. So we stop. And oh, that wasn't really very interesting because the only factors of 5 are 1 and, well, the number itself. And actually, that is what makes it prime. So for any number, if the only factors are 1 and the number itself, then 5 is a prime number. So um, using that method, you can then find out a whole bunch of different prime numbers. So if we start off, we'll just go from 1, 2, 3, 4, and we'll see how many prime numbers we can find. Okay? So 1, uh, well actually, there's one slight exception here. And you just need to learn this one. 1 is not a prime number. You'd think, if you did your sort of factors thing with 1, well, 1 times 1, you've got what you started, so you stop. 1 is the only factor that goes into it. So you'd expect it to be prime. And in fact, it did used to be a prime number, but it turns out mathematicians decided 1 should not be a prime number any longer. It's a long story and not really very interesting, so I'm not going to try and explain why here. But you just have to remember, 1 is not a prime number. So the first prime number is actually 2. So if we make a list here, because the only numbers that divide into 2 are 1 and 2, the number itself. So 2 is the first prime number. The next prime number is 3, because the only numbers that divide into 3 are 1 and 3. 4, is that prime? Well, no. Because 4 is even, it's divisible by 2. 2 goes into 4, so it's not a prime number. 5 is a prime number, we just saw that one. 6, well again that's even, so 6 is going to be divisible by 2, so not a prime number. 7, yep, that's a prime number. Now you can sort of see a pattern here, can't you? Firstly, you're not going to have any more even numbers after 2. 2 is the only even prime number because any other even number is divisible by 2, so that can't be prime. So we're going to have a lot of odd numbers here. Are we going to have all the odd numbers? Well, let's try the next one, 9. Uh, no, because 9 is divisible by 3. So 9's not a prime number. There's no point trying any more even numbers, so we'll try 11. And yes, 11 is a prime number. Because nothing else goes into 11 except 1 and 11. 13 will be the next odd number. And yes, I don't think anything else goes into 13. 15. Uh, well, 3 times 5 is 15, so that's not prime. 17 is prime, nothing else goes into 17. 19, yeah, I don't think anything else goes into 19. 21, uh, well, three sevens are 21, so that's not prime. 23, uh, I don't think anything else goes into 23, so that's a prime number. 25, oh, 25 is divisible by five, so that's not prime. 27, oh, hang on. Three nines are 27, so 27 is not prime either. So 29, yes, I don't think anything else goes into 29. And we could carry on, you get the idea. Um, and in fact, these prime numbers go on forever. If you keep going, you can always find a bigger prime number. Although what you might notice is, as you go higher and higher, the prime numbers become less common. Essentially, for numbers up here like 27, 29, 31, things like that, you're going to find there are far more numbers that are smaller than it that could potentially divide into it. So that's why they become less common. But they do go on forever. Now, in terms of using prime numbers, if you ever get asked a question about a prime number, you might be given like a list of numbers and asked to pick out which ones are prime. So, you know, if you were given 64, 13, 27, 5 and... 18 or something, and you had to pick out which of these numbers are prime, well you just have to think to yourself, 
does any number divide into these? First of all, you can ignore all the even numbers. They can't be prime. And then look at the rest. Does anything go into 13? Nope, that's prime. Does anything go into 27? Yes, 3 and 9, so that's not prime. Does anything go into 5? Nope, so that's prime. So that's how you pick out prime numbers from a list. You just need to ask, does anything else go into it? Uh, let me get my board rubber off the floor. So that's the first kind of question you could be asked. But the other thing they might do is they say, find all the factors of a certain number and then write down which ones are prime. So let me show you. Imagine we had to find all the factors of 27. So again, using our method, you say 1 times 27 gives you 27. Does 2 go in? No, it's not even. Does 3 go in? Yes. 3 times 9 is 27. Does 4 go in? No. 5? No. 6? 6 will go into 30, so no. 7? No. 8? Again, it's not even, so it can't be 8. 9, we've already got, so you stop. So in fact, the only factors of 27, if you're asked to write out all the factors, would be 1, 3, 9, and 27. So those are the factors of 27. And then you'd have to pick out which one of these factors are prime. Well, remember, 1 is not a prime number. Don't include that one. 3, yep, that's a prime number. 9, that's not prime because it's divisible by 3. And 27, well, that's divisible by 3 and 9, so that's not prime either. So, in fact, the only prime number from this list of factors would be 3. So, those are the kind of questions you're likely to get asked about prime numbers. A lot of people ask, what's the point of prime numbers? Well, some people do actually use prime numbers. Uh, there are certain specialist fields, and admittedly they are quite specialist, um, where prime numbers are extremely useful. So, cryptography, for example, creating and trying to decode code uh, where you encrypt messages, um, they do rely on prime numbers. And there are certain fields in mathematics where they use prime numbers as well. But for most people, admittedly, you're probably not ever going to use prime numbers anywhere. But it's a kind of general knowledge thing. It's a bit like knowing what the capital of Mongolia is. It's not really very useful, but it's general knowledge. And it's a bit like that with primes. You should know what a prime number is, not because it's especially useful, but just because it's general knowledge. Think of it as maths, general knowledge. Obviously, some people need to know if you live in Mongolia, you probably do need to know what the capital of Mongolia is. But for most of us, as long as we know the definition, we don't need to worry too much about it. Alright, so my name is Jonathan Hicks, and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Mm -hmm.